the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 118, Proverbs 6-9 Crossroads between wisdom and foolishness. We can meet true wisdom through deep fellowship with God, who is the master of wisdom and rules the world wisely. First point, wisdom must be expressed through daily activities. Solomon emphasized time and time again that obeying and believing in God was true wisdom. The opposite of wisdom is foolishness. Foolishness comes from laziness. The time God grants us on this earth is what we live by in front of God. If we use this time foolishly, then we are foolish people. We cannot be wise if we are lazy or are selfish. It is important that we offer our unmost to God and do His work. Second point, a wise person can overcome any type of seduction. The wisdom Solomon emphasized was a life obeying and fearing God. He taught that we should not be seduced by earthly seductions. We should always be wary of what we are seduced by and be able to control our foolish desires. Joseph was a very wise person. Thus, Joseph was able to overcome the seduction of a Potiphar's wife. Jonathan was also a very wise person. Hence, he was able to keep his faith despite his father's seduction to kill David. There were also many foolish people in the Bible. An example is Amnon, who was fooled by his cunning friend. Because of this, he ended up being killed by Absalom. Third point, wisdom is more valuable than any material object. Solomon claimed that one who was given wisdom was the one who had something more valuable than anything else. During David's days, there was a foolish man named Nabal who chose stupidity. Nabal made the decision to ridicule David rather than to help him. There was also a young man during David's days that lied that he had killed Saul, when in fact Saul had committed suicide. This was in hopes that David would repay him with goods. But he was put to death straight away because of this. Different to these people was Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. During Absalom's coup d'etat against David, he stuck by David and shared his pain. Mephibosheth was able to gain David's trust and respect by acting wisely. Fourth point, wisdom existed before creation and it exists in God. Wisdom was created after God created the universe. Solomon claimed that God's wisdom began before the universe existed. Regarding God's wisdom, Paul claimed, Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgment is, and his path beyond tracing out, who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Paul also said this to the Corinthian church. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased 
through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand science, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Rather than relying on early wisdom, it is a much happier life learning God's wisdom and to live in gratitude. Fifth point, all humans stand between wisdom and foolishness. Solomon claimed that God invites us all to be wise. Wisdom is something that people can claim if they decide to follow in God. But the problem lies when people succumb to regret and other emotions. That is why all humans stand somewhere between wisdom and foolishness. The Bible teaches us how we can be wise. The method is to obey God and to know God's laws. James tells us to ask for wisdom from God. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biongo Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.